Through the centuries, London has inspired great writers, painters, statesmen, and great criminals. But in the year 1886, the greatest criminal of them all suddenly came into being. His identity was unknown. He never left a clue. And all London waited breathlessly as he struck again and again with sheer audacity and terrifying results. gold seal from Edinburgh Castle and the secret codes from the Admiralty and now last night some of Queen Elizabeth's jewels. What in thunder is Scotland Yard doing about it? I'm sure you're right. Well, you must have some ideas about the case. What are you doing anyway? Research. Research? Holmes, do you realize that this gang has helped itself to state secrets and government treasure? Good morning, Inspector. Good morning, Dr. Watson. Well, Lestrade, you were up early. You'd be up early, too, if every government official in London was breathing down your neck. Yes, that would make sleep difficult. Holmes, I'll come right to the point. Good. It's these extraordinary thefts, government things, you know. The commissioner's demanding results. It's not that I really need any help. <laughs> I'm closing in on them now. Congratulations, Lestrade. I look forward to reading about it in the newspapers. Mm. Slowly, systematically, the police are at work. We know their modus operandi. Our senses are sharpened, razor honed. The vice is closing. I simply thought you might like to share the glory. Wouldn't be fair. The glory is rightfully yours. Oh, there's enough for two. I just hamper you. A little hampering never hurts. It's healthy. Nothing like a little healthy hampering, what? No, Lestrade, I couldn't. The case is in your competent hands. I'm certain you'll resolve it shortly. But, Holmes, it's always the sort of thing that appeals to you. A daring, ingenious master criminal. I'm really quite busy. I just don't have the time for it. Well, of course, you're not obligated. I'm sorry. I, um... <clears throat> I, uh... Goodbye, Holmes. Goodbye, Lestrade. Well, if I can be of any help, Lestrade, don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you very much, Dr. Watson. Yes. Well, I think that you should recognize that the security of England is threatened by this criminal. I know that you're pressed, Holmes. But I don't think that you recognize the cunning with... That's a special mixture. You wouldn't like it. I'm sorry, old man. I didn't mean to upset you. You startled me, that's all. I'm sorry, really. Well, I think I'll, uh, go for a walk. Get a bit of air. Very well. Goodbye, Watson. Certainly, Holmes's erratic behavior was enough to set my nerves on edge. But now, suddenly, I was far more than upset. I was frightened. For I'd seen something in that humidor, at least 
I thought I had seen something. Perhaps it was my imagination, my nerves. But I could have sworn that mixed with the tobacco of the humidor was a diamond necklace. I decided to settle the matter one way or the other. coming out? Yes, you coming in? No, no I was just, uh, just strolling. Mm. Well, I have an appointment. Oh, well, I have nothing better to do. Do you mind if I stroll with you? Well, as a matter of fact, it's a private matter. I think it's oh. better if I go alone. Just as you say. Well, I'll see you at lunch. Most likely. Most likely. I said it was a private matter. I... 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 It's not what it seems. You shouldn't jump to conclusions, Holmes. Well, I suppose I'll see you at lunch. I believe we've already discussed that. Yes. Well, then... Cheerio. When I returned to the flat, the humidor was in its place again. But when I searched, I found nothing in it now but tobacco. Ordinary tobacco. No special mixture. When Holmes returned, he was kind enough to let the morning affair be forgotten, or apparently forgotten. His only reference to it was his remark about another private appointment that afternoon. I felt he gave a bit of undue emphasis to the word private. As for me, as terrible as the morning experience had been, it actually stressed the importance of continuing my investigation. One other thing was also made quite clear. I realized that if one were to match wits with Sherlock Holmes, one could not employ ordinary methods. Heaven's name are you doing up there? This is where the cabby usually sits, sir. Come now, Watson. I think you must be confusing me with someone else, sir. Sedgley is the name. Well, Sedgley, there is a corner of your beard which is moth-eaten. Really, Watson, I'm astounded. I would never have suspected you of intruding on another's privacy. Your behavior is beyond comprehension. Here comes a legitimate carriage. Good day, Sedgley. Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Is this here carriage free, cabby? Uh, yes, sir. 816 Bleak Street. And get a move on, eh? 816 Bleak Street. Yes, sir. 816. I don't want any of you to come to my flat again. I thought you'd want to see these here plans before our meeting. The alterations made to the bank vault a year ago. Mm -hmm. Minor difficulties. 
It is nothing serious. Miss Ames. Yes, Mr. Holmes. I would like you to take 15 paces to the left and then 10 paces to the right, not 11 and 8 as before. 15 and then 10. Ulrich, you will need approximately three more pounds of explosives. Now, you must all remember that the first requisite of being a good thief is capable planning. And as the newspapers have said, we are the most successful thieves that England has ever known. Holmes was a sick man. There could be no other motive for his entrance into crime. I decided I would consult a specialist and try with my entire energy to save Holmes from himself. Repressed hostilities against society. I don't think that Holmes will allow any probing, willingly at least. If only you could meet him, ostensibly on a non-professional basis. If I could introduce you as, as a friend. Excellent suggestion. Well, then why not come to dinner tonight? I could say that you were an old friend from medical school days. No fish, please. I hate fish. I remember one day in Brighton, I had uh, well, scallops. Seven o'clock, then, 221B Baker Street. I shall be prompt. You really believe that I have the potential to become a great detective? Well, in my hands, with my guidance, the greatest. Uh, take yourself, Mr. Holmes, as a hypothetical case. Do you ever have the notion, for instance, that you are the King of England? No. No, I don't believe so. Well, uh, your, your dreams, then. I imagine you dream that all of London fears you. I sleep very soundly. Mm. Uh, but there's always those little um, nervous habits, um, idiosyncrasies. Do you, um... Do you rub your fingers on the table or pull your left ear lip? It's interesting you should mention those things, Professor Fishblade, for I observe that you have three half-smoked cigars in your waistcoat pocket. That your shoes have lifts in them to give you greater height, even though you're well over six feet tall. And that your fingernails are bitten to the quick. Hypothetically speaking, Professor Fishblade, it appears that you are an erratic man. Witness the cigars. You are a vain man, witness the lifts in your shoes. You are an insecure man, witness the fingernails. I've also observed that you mangle three pieces of bread at dinner, and you cut your roast beef with a terrible vengeance. Offhand, it appears that you harbor some repressed feelings of hostility towards society. There's a fish blade, where are you going? Excuse me. Interesting friends you have, Watson. He ran right outside. Just as well, Watson. I have to leave shortly anyway. A private matter. Oh, didn't I tell you? I've been invited to a reception in honor of the new ambassador from Turkey. At the embassy? At the residence of our Minister of Foreign Affairs. I'll only be a moment, Jameson. Good evening, Dr. Watson. Inspector, you're the very man I want to see. I'm going to tell you something, Mr. Stroud. It is a secret that you must keep until your dying day. The mood the commissioner's in, that may not be very long. I know who London's master thief is. Who? <gasps> Holmes. 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 You're joking. I wish I were. I can't believe it. Well, I can prove it, Estrade, but that's not the point. The point is, we must stop Holmes and get him into a rest home somewhere. Holmes! Hello, Estrade. I didn't realize you were here. We just happened to be in the neighborhood. Watson, I wonder if you'd give me a hand with this cape. Well, yes, of course. Thank you very much. I thought you hated formal affairs. Uh, normally that's true, but I'm looking forward to this one. There we are. Oh, thank you, Watson. Huh. Oh, by the way, Lestrade, how's the yard progressing with its big case? Any new clues? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, um, <clears throat> terrible. Nothing at all. 
Flowers? Yes, rather lovely, eh? For a pretty young girl I'm escorting tonight. Well, good night. Good night, Good night, Holmes. Good night. If only we had some idea what he was going to do. We'll have to think it out, like Holmes would. When he was normal. Formal clothes are odd. Well, he was going to a diplomatic reception. That's which normally he'd stay miles away from. Or perhaps there was some special reason tonight. Perhaps. Official papers of state. Secret documents. In the minister's safe. in the study. Yes. Come on. Stroud, where is the safe? Well, it must be here somewhere. see the garden as well as the safe. Where are you going? I am going to handcuff Sherlock Holmes in case he tries to escape through the front door. We'll get him. You can come out now, Watson. Oh, this here chap sneaking round outside, Mr. Holmes. Holmes, you don't know what you're doing. You're not well. You can't get away with this, Holmes. But I already have. Uh, Toby, fetch the commissioner, would you please? Commissioner? Naturally. Scotland Yard? Holmes, I'll send you to Switzerland. France, Spain. Somewhere where you will have a total rest. Splendid work, Holmes. Splendid. Thank you, Commissioner. Oh. Commissioner, you too. What are you talking about, Lestrade? And put your hands down. <coughs> yes, sir. Mr. Holmes. All Britain owes you a tremendous debt of gratitude for this magnificent service. Certainly, those of us who knew what you were doing were aware of both the personal and professional dangers involved. But what we have learned from your work has a value beyond calculation. Service? Values? What in heaven's name are you talking about? There has been a great deal of concern in recent months regarding the methods employed to guard some of our national treasures and government secrets. It was discussed in the various ministries and at the Yard. It was finally decided that we should put ourselves to the test. Mr. Holmes was hired as a worthy adversary to our security. The results have been most gratifying and more than a bit embarrassing. 
<clears throat> Mr. Holmes, again, my thanks. Thank you. Working for Scotland Yard? Why didn't you tell me? I agreed. In fact, I insisted on total secrecy. It wouldn't have been a true test without it. You didn't trust me. Or me. I've had the distinct impression in the last few days that I haven't exactly been trusted either. But that's understandable. After all, the Empire was at stake. But that's all over now. Yes, that's all over now. Let's go back to Baker Street and have a nightcap, Inspector. Coming, Sedgley? Sedgley? Morning. Something wrong? You said that your work with Scotland Yard was over. It is. Well, it says here in the morning papers that Great Portland Street Bank was robbed again last night. Watson, I was with you last night at the theater. Oh, yes. That was last night, wasn't it? I'm worried about you, Watson. You seem very concerned and irritable. I'm not concerned, and I'm not irritable. Do you understand? Perfectly, you feel fine. And perfectly normal. Certainly. Watson. Do you ever get the feeling that you're King of England? Centennial is more than just a miniseries. Centennial is more than just a story. Centennial is truly spectacular. Starting Sunday night at 8, only on Coffee, Stereo TV 20. The IM Force is at it again with more action. It's Mission Impossible, coming up next.